By any standard of measure, Moses was a powerful man. When he was 40 years old, he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew slave. And he looked this way and he looked that. And when he thought no one was watching, he fought the Egyptian and killed him. The story seems to suggest that Moses felt like he was ready to put Israel on his back and just carry them out of Egypt in his own strength. But he soon learned otherwise. And he found himself herding sheep in the wilderness for 40 more years. And that's where God famously appeared to Moses in the burning bush, telling him to go back to Egypt and lead Israel out. But something had changed in Moses. He was no longer brimming with self-confidence or rushing out to do things in his own way. In fact, he could only be persuaded to take on this responsibility after God promised to be with him in the work. It was this final phase of Moses' life that he led one of the greatest migrations in the history of the world. When Israel crossed the Red Sea, Egypt was nothing but a smoldering ruin in the rearview mirror, and a new world of possibility opened before them. But what does this have to do with the Beatitudes? Well, much in every way. You see, Jesus said, Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. And then we're told in Numbers 12, verse 3, that Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. I don't know what image comes to your mind when you read the word meek, but I've learned to immediately associate the word with Moses because this removes from my mind any association of meekness with weakness. Moses was a man of might and power. But that power was harnessed by God for good. I have no doubt that Moses had the natural gifts to become one of the world's great tyrants and a pharaoh over Egypt. But instead, he chose to submit himself under the mighty hand of God and inherit far more than any worldly ruler could ever attain. And just as God called Moses into his service, in this beatitude, Jesus is calling you to surrender yourself to God, to stop trying to make things happen by your might and for your glory. Maybe you're trying to be a Christian, but you've refused up till now to change your sex life or the way you spend your money or the way you run your business or something else of significance. In other words, you're saying, I'll be a Christian as long as I stay in control. But that's the exact opposite of what it means to be a Christian. And it's the exact opposite of this beatitude. Now, I get it. We resist coming under his control because we're afraid of what we stand to lose. But the promise to the meek is that they will inherit the earth. They get everything. Listen, if you live your life the way you want to live it, sooner or later, you're going to lose everything. But the moment you surrender your life to Jesus, you become an heir of all things.